What purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Will the uh, gentleman specify as to which of the amendments? I believe it's uh, amendment number six. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number six printed in the congressional record offered by Mr. McClintock of California. The gentleman from uh, California is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment saves nearly $1.5 billion by ending the failed energy efficiency and renewable energy program. If we're serious about an all-of-the-above energy policy, we have got to stop using taxpayer money to pick winners and losers based on political connections. Instead, we need to require every energy company to compete on its own merit as decided by the customers it attracts by offering better products at lower cost. For too long, we have suffered from the conceit that politicians can make better energy investments with taxpayer money than investors can make with their own money. It's this conceit that's produced the continuing spectacle of collapsing energy scandals epitomized by the Solyndra fiasco. And at least Solyndra was funded from a loan program in which the public has a chance to get some of its money back when these dubious schemes go bankrupt. This program is direct spending that funds commercialization projects for ideological pleasing technologies and the politically favored firms that make them money that taxpayers have no chance of recovering after it's spent. Uh, this amendment, and the two that I will offer soon, uh, protect taxpayers from being forced into being venture capitalists by incompetent politicians. It gets government out of the energy business and requires all energy companies and all energy technologies to compete equally and on their own merits. Most of the money in this program goes to wind, solar, and car research and development subsidies. We're told that's necessary to nurture these new and promising technologies. Well, these technologies are not new, and they are not promising. Photovoltaic cells, for example, were invented by French physicist Edmond Becquerel in 1839. And in more than 170 years of technological research and innovation and billions of dollars of taxpayer subsidies, we have not yet invented a more expensive way to produce electricity. So we hide its true costs to consumers through subsidies taken from their taxes. Nor is there any earthly reason why taxpayers should be forced to serve as the research and development department for General Motors or for any other company or technology. And we're told that, well, someday, someday this research might pay us back many times over. We've been told that for 40 years. Now, I hope someday that these empty promises will be redeemed, but that's still not a reason for taxpayers to foot the bill. It's a reason for the actual research and development to be paid for by the companies that will profit from this long-promised breakthrough. And if they're not willing to finance it with their own money, we have no business forcing our constituents to finance it with theirs. All we've accomplished with these programs is to take dollars that would have naturally flowed into the most effective and promising technologies and divert them instead to those that are politically favored. This misallocation of resources not only destroys jobs and productive ventures, it ends up minimizing our energy potential instead of maximizing it and destroying our wealth instead of creating it. Madam Chairman, voters entrusted Republicans with the House majority with the very specific mandate to stop wasting money. Moreover, the House is where spending bills must originate. The government doesn't spend a dollar unless the House says that it will spend a dollar. A day doesn't go by that we don't hear an indictment of Solyndra and its multiplying scandals. And yet here we have the Republican Energy Appropriations Bill that continues to shovel billions of dollars on the very same folly that produced Solyndra. Politicians love to appear at ribbon cuttings and issue self-congratulatory press releases at government-supported alternative energy businesses, but they fall strangely silent when asked to actually account for the billions of our dollars that they've wasted. Well, that day of reckoning has arrived. These policies are impoverishing our country 
Our taxpayers are exhausted. Our Treasury is empty. It is time, it is past time, that this House majority proved worthy of the trust the American people gave it more than a year and a half ago. I yield back. Yields back. Gentleman from New Jersey. Uh, Madam